Hello, I'm back, and you're obviously noticing right away this is not the LG G2. Um, as the video tells you, this is the Galaxy S6, the AT&T variant. Um, yes, with the locked bootloader and all. However, this is not your stock ROM. Thanks to a wonderful developer, his name is Scott, and on the forums, he's, I, I, I don't want to mispronounce it, I, I want to say it's Scroller, Scroller. His name is spelled uh, S-C-R-O-S-L-E-R, -E and he's been around for quite some time. In fact, I used his clean ROM, which is what we're using here. I used his clean ROM on the LG G2 for a short period of time because he was around in the early development days for that. As you can see here, um, shows the Knox version and everything here. Knox, as far as um, the warranty goes, is still intact. But Knox everywhere else has been removed with this ROM. Um, it's uh, based on the latest AT&T Android 5.0.2. And again, to confirm, this is the AT&T variant. This is the uh, SM-G920A. Basically, he removed most, if not, well, just about all the AT&T bloat and most of the Amazon bloat. Uh, in fact, I don't think I saw any of the Amazon bloat on there. The only thing really he left was the visual voice mailing. He left some of the uh, necessary applications to make sure that the ROM can run properly, whether you're running the um, TouchWiz launcher or not. I am not using the TouchWiz launcher. Real quick, this is actually based off the AT&T stock ROM, so you do have the AT&T menus here. Uh, I'm hoping that um, Scott continues to develop for us and can kind of give us some features that we're missing in our settings, or at least give us that... Um, setting list that we used to have uh, with the Android style instead of these tabs. Now one thing that is missing from the AT&T version, I don't know why AT&T took it out, is the ability to disable this constant notification. That's the only reason the Wi-Fi is on actually, is uh, so that you can see that notification there that stays there the entire time. I'm a very big fan of clean in my UIs and in my status bar and in my pull down menu, so that really does bother me. Uh, really, I've only been using this ROM for a day. I can tell you it's very fast, it's very fluid, and 2.2 gives it around 69,000 and change. And um, even using Nova Launcher here is just super, super fluid and uh, no stutters. I will tell you that on the stock, no matter what I keep reading about and all the prices I get for this Exynos processor, uh, there are times I can get it to stutter in uh, scrolling and in some applications that I'm using and it's noticeable and uh, you can tell a difference uh, with this ROM already. All right, real quick we're going to do a boot test for you, see how long it takes for it to boot up and I will show you the changes to the boot. All right, timer's going, Let that focus there. Um, you'll notice here this looks the same but there is no sound so you don't get the sound there and then there is no AT&T logo that pops up after there you go and I hit just a, a little bit late so we're probably closer to 20 even or 19 and a half seconds there that's a really quick boot And there you go, this is Scott's ROM here uh, that he brought to us, clean ROM. And I will go over and make a video later on how to install it. I will also post a video in four days of typical use to show you uh, what kind of battery life improvements you'll expect from the ROM, how it performs, day-to-day -day operations. So far, it has been a dream. The only crashes I got were TouchWiz, the TouchWiz launcher. Uh, TouchWiz Home would crash when installing applications from the Play Store because the uh, Play Store application would be installed to the home page on TouchWiz which wasn't running and it would cause it to crash. There's probably some more reasons behind that but that's what I have deduced from using it. It doesn't affect a thing because I'm not using the TouchWiz launcher so you just click it to go away. Other than that um, Really, it's been it's been a dream. It's been very fluid. Thank you, Scott, very much. We look forward to your continued development. He does not own the AT&T variant, so I don't know how much support we'll get from him. Um, he owns the Verizon variant, but 
as his profile will show and all the ROMs that he's provided, this guy is a genius and uh, a major contributor to the community. And we're very thankful to have him uh, even giving us uh, a chance at a ROM um, that takes out a lot of that bloat and a lot of that uh, garbage. In fact, I'll tell you that when I installed it, there wasn't even a whole page of applications here. So good job, Scott. Let's go ahead and run 2-2 for you right quick. While that's running, let's talk about how this was even accomplished. No computer necessary, believe it or not. You can download uh, everything you need from XDA um, with the exception of Flash Fire, which you would go to XDA. The link will be provided below. Uh, but first and foremost, you use Ping Pong to root the phone. And you just download it, install it, open it. It took two tries for me. Uh, and one time it rebooted and it still didn't do it. I did it the second time, and after I rebooted it, it was fine. So if it doesn't do it the first time, give it a try it again. It's a very simple application. It's really hard to mess it up. And that was on the latest update, too. Obviously, you saw my 5.0.2. Uh, and that was the way it was before when I ended it. Once you've rooted the phone with Ping Pong, you use an application called Flash Fire. To get Flash Fire, uh, again, the link will be provided below. You will go to their form. You'll go to their Google Plus page. You'll uh, become a member of the Google Plus page. And then you should get the uh, notification. Or you just keep checking the Play Store. And it took it probably about maybe an hour before it went through. And I was able to actually download it from the, the Play Store. And uh, once you have Flash Fire on there, I was very nervous. I tried doing a backup, and I'll tell you what happened. Uh, I selected the backup, tried to do a full backup, and it uh, reboots. It, you see a lot of code running on the screen as it's loading up um, its uh, system so, or its recovery. So it doesn't, it doesn't actually replace your recovery or start recovery. So that's why, trips is, that's why Nox is not tripped. And then uh, it starts doing the backup and they'll do it in one gig uh, portion, so it'll split it up. Well, as it's going through and doing it, it gets to the last part, data. Once it's finished, it starts all over again. So it, I'll do it three times before I finally just rebooted the phone. And unfortunately, it doesn't make one and then make one dash one and then make one dash two. It makes one and then copies over it and then copies over it. So really, I couldn't get the backup. I, or at least I couldn't get a useful backup out of it. Um, I did try to cheat, and, and, and it's not recommended. I did try to reboot it uh, with the timing, so I started recording how long it was going to take before it got done. And it was incrementally a few seconds longer each time, obviously, because the phone got hotter. Um, and I tried holding the power button, the home button, and the volume down button to get to reboot. Uh, but I just couldn't get timed right, and honestly, that's just not going to be very effective because it might not get a chance to complete that backup, and then what good is it? So instead, I used Titanium Backup, backed up the apps. So I was nervous when I installed and flashed the ROM, but it's quite simple. You select your wipes, you select install ROM, and then you select uh, flash. It'll give you a prompt, it's gonna reboot the phone, it reboots the phone, lines of code, installs the ROM, does the wipes, and then reboots. I was afraid it might have done it in the wrong order, but it did not. Worked just fine, worked, worked really well actually. And um, I was very nervous because of Knox and this being a brand new device. Um, and again, I can make another video later to talk about why I selected it. We're at 68,729. This is one of my lower scores. Um, usually I'm benching it around 69,008 or 69,006 and some change. So, but still, uh, very respectable, very fast score. Uh, this Exynos processor is amazing and it's even better on this ROM. Well, guys, stay tuned. Again, I'm going to post another video in a few days after some usage and give you some real world performance but um, this is a great start and there is another ROM available based off of um, this one if I'm mistaken or at least very similar to very debloated in fact I think he even took out touch with so um, you know I'll give this one a go for a few days test it out see how it works and then I'll try the next one and who knows what will be available at that point um, and we'll just keep going I hope you enjoyed the video and if you found it useful please give me a thumbs up